Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here, once again, is in my sister's basement where the roosters are crowing. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Uh, so an astute observer noticed that I was once again using the stock quill lever on my Mark V. Yeah, you know, um, old habits. Uh, I purchased, I don't even know how long ago, quite a while ago, um, this aftermarket quill lever. It actually came with this one and a three-armed uh, lever. And this one is designed to have these hubs mounted onto the, uh, the shaft there, and then these insert and quickly can be repositioned in about a thousand different locations. Um, I've been using them. They're fine, but they're just so huge. I mean, they're absolutely huge. Um, I, I like that they give me tons of leverage for, for things like uh, mortising. That, that's been great. Um, I like that I can position them all over the place. That's been great. But they're also very much in the way. Um, you know, when you're using your table saw, that, that quill lever has to be somewhere. And, and one of the things that I've always been in the habit of doing, and I put this here just so it could be in the video, um, I'm, I've been in the habit forever of keeping that lever on the back side of the headstock. Uh, that way, it's never in the way of my speed dial when I'm changing speeds on my Mark V. Um, when I raise the machine up into the drill press position, that puts it on the right-hand side, which is where I'm going to use it as a right-hand person. And when I need to use it, even if I'm using it on my table saw to move the, the saw blade just a bit, I can reach over the headstock and do it. So I've never had a problem with that particular quill lever, except it can be short for mortising. And those three positions that we have may not be the exact position you want. So uh, giving in to some uh, viewer recommendations, I have purchased from ShopSmith their magnetic multi-position quill lever. So let's take this out of the package and, uh, and see what we get. Basically, what we have is a, a hub that's going to attach to the shaft here, where the one I just took took off. It's going to attach to the shaft and um, pull that off of there. You can see that hub has a whole bunch of different gazintas. And then here um, uh, on the lever itself, there's a rare earth magnet and a pin. So the way this is going to work is this is going to be clamped firmly with a set screw onto the shaft. And then I can put this anywhere I want, as long as it aligns with one of the holes there. And then the, uh, the, the, um, the rare earth magnet holds it firmly in place. And that lever right there, that pin is what's going to cause this to rotate, force this to rotate. So let's attach it, see how it compares. Now, does that attach using a 532nd hex? It certainly does. Way to go, Jim McCann and gang. We'll put that on, tighten it down into one of those dimples, and we'll tighten that fairly aggressively. And that's it for the install. And now that lever can go anywhere. Now, I already mentioned that I prefer to have the lever over on the far side of the headstock. So I purchased a second hub. That'll go on the far side. Now, I want to compare these. If you look at this version, this aftermarket version, um, and how far this is going to stick out from the headstock, you can see this hub sticks out about as far as this entire part here. But that is, by comparison, pretty much exactly then the same size as this one. So if, if my complaint is I don't like one or the other sticking out further from the headstock, they're both extending out exactly the same amount. So uh, I, I have no complaint there. One thing I will say though, is if I don't have the handle installed, this hub does stick out, I don't know, about half an inch further. But from there, it, it pretty much feels just like a quill lever. Let's get the other hub on. 
Definitely want to line that up with the dimple. Otherwise, if that set screw comes down where it shouldn't, it will raise a burr. There we go. When that set screws in a dimple, it's pretty much close to close to flush with the hub. If we're not in the dimple, if it's sticking up, you're probably catching that shoulder. There we go. So I think we're just going to call this one a shop short because uh, that's all there is for now. Um, I know how a quill lever works. That, that seems like it's going to work just fine, um, but I'm going to have to run it through its paces. So that one's going to live on my Mark V for a little while, and uh, we'll give you a full review. But I'm curious, if you've upgraded to one or the other, or you've tried both of these, do you have an opinion of them? Um, has the standard quill lever been a problem for you, or, or is it just fine? Uh, please leave your questions, comments, and cheap shots down below. We'll do a follow-up midweek-ish. Make it a great day.